let us open with a word of prayer. God of life, there are days when the burdens we carry are heavy on our shoulders and weigh us down, when the road seems dreary and endless, the skies gray and threatening, when our lives have no music in them and our hearts are lonely and our souls have lost their courage. Flood the path with light today. Turn our eyes to where the skies are full of promise. Tune our hearts to brave music. Give us the sense of comradeship with heroes and saints of every age. And so quicken our spirits that we may be able to encourage the souls of all who journey with us on the road of life. To your honor and glory. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Good morning, everybody. Today, I'll be reading The Young Hero and the Horrible Giant from our Jesus Storybook Bible on page 122. God's people had some scary enemies, but the Philistines were the scariest of them all. And now the Philistines had come to fight them. The Philistines had a secret weapon called Goliath. Goliath was a terrifying soldier and worst of all, a giant. A giant so strong and solid and so scary that no one had ever been able to fight him and live to tell the tale. So there they were, the Philistines on one hill and the God's people on the other. Every day, Goliath came out and shouted, Send your best soldier to fight me. If he wins, we will be your slaves. But if I win, you will be our slaves. And no one spoke and no one moved. Chickens, Goliath bellowed. Your God can't save you. I'll rip your heads off and have you on toast. His beady, greedy eyes glowered at them hungrily from under his this horrible helmet, as if any minute he really might just gobble them all up. And he laughed his terrible laugh. Ha 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 ha! It boomed, echoing horribly around and around the dry, dry valley. Well, Goliath might just as well have been a green monster with three heads. God's people froze with him. They knew if someone would do something quick, but God would do something. He would send someone to save them. Now David was the youngest son of Jesse, and his brothers were soldiers in the army. And one day when David brought his brothers their lunches, he saw Goliath, and he saw how scared everyone was. Don't be afraid, David said. I'll fight him for you. You're only a little shepherd boy, the king said, and Goliath is a great soldier. How will you fight him? God will help me, David said. So the king gave David his royal armor to wear, but it was too heavy and too big, and David couldn't walk. So he said, I won't need this. Instead, David picked out five smooth stones from the stream, took his slingshot, and walked towards Goliath. Goliath walked towards David. Hew! Goliath peered down at the small boy. I'm little, David shouted up to him, but God is great. Goliath laughed an even terribler laugh than usual. Ha 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 ha! It went... With just one swing of his giant sword, Goliath could finish the boy off. But David kept going. It isn't how strong you are or how many swords you have and spears that will save you. It is God who saves you. This is God's battle, and God always wins his battles. David put a stone in his sling, swung it around, and let it go. The little stone flew like a bullet through the air and struck Goliath right between the eyes. Goliath stopped laughing. He stumbled and staggered and crash, fell dead. When the Philistines saw Goliath was dead, they ran away. And when God's people saw them running away, they cheered. God had saved his people and David was a hero. Many years later, God would send his people another young hero to fight for them and to save them. But this hero would fight the greatest battle the world has ever known. 
All right, I hope everybody has a great week. See you next Sunday. Good morning, everyone. Today's reading is Psalm 67, the nation's call to praise God. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the people with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth reveal him. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, you have taught us in the scriptures that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word endures forever. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Independence Day was fast approaching last week, and so a local community preschool teacher took the opportunity to teach her class all about patriotism. She said to them, you know, we live in a great country, and one of the best things about it is that we are all free. Well, at this, a little boy in her class marched up from the back of the room right to the front, put his hands on his hips, and said angrily, I'm not free. I'm four. Twelve years ago, when my oldest son, Grady, was free, I mean three, he liked to run at top speed throughout the house, and we put a thick blanket over the brick fireplace in our living room so that he wouldn't fall and trip and hurt himself on it. Well, he quickly decided that this blanket-covered fireplace was his personal stage for concerts and performances. And one day, we managed to record him doing his thing. Are you singing into the microphone? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Are you in the audience? I'm in the audience, yes. You're on stage? I look at you. Go stage. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. I love me. And that image right there is the one I want to talk about today. You see, to Grady and to most kids that age, birthdays were and are a really big deal. They're the best thing ever, the thing you spend all year waiting for to happen. And then as soon as it happens, you start waiting for the next one to happen. And so I love how in that moment you just saw when Grady imagined that all of the world was watching him, his one wish, his one blessing to his audience was for a happy birthday. Incidentally, it was nowhere near his birthday. That was in November, and his birthday's in September. But that's what he wanted for everyone, and not just for mommy and daddy, those closest to him, although we were included in that, but he wished a happy birthday with outstretched arms to all of them, meaning everyone, period. And that is the prevailing sentiment behind Psalm 67, 
a joyful psalm that celebrates God's goodness, God's justice, and God's favor, and then extends a wish for all of that blessing and joy to be shared by all the nations and all the people everywhere, period. Psalm 67 begins right out the gate with a blessing in verse 1. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Now, if those words sound familiar, it's because they're very similar to what I say at the end of every worship service when I give the benediction. Those words would have also been familiar to ancient Jewish people because they are taken from a very old blessing in the book of Numbers, a blessing that goes like this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. But there's a subtle difference between those classic words that I use in the benediction and the similar words in Psalm 67. The older blessing, the benediction, says, may the Lord bless you and be gracious to you and make his face shine upon you. And the you in Hebrew is in the second person singular. In other words, it's just you, an individual, not y'all, plural, or all y'all, as we say sometimes in Texas. But here in Psalm 67, it's in the first person plural. May God bless us, be gracious to us, and make his face shine upon us, all of us. That's a very small change from numbers to Psalms, but it's an important one. Because there are two competing threads that weave their way through the book of Psalms, in fact, through the entire Bible, and they are often in opposition to each other. One of those threads is the one that says, and we've seen this in the Psalms and in the Old Testament, it's the one that says, God, please bless my nation, Israel. And smash all those other countries, you know, the bad ones, to tiny bits. We've heard that in the Psalms as recently as, I think, last week or the week before that in some of the Psalms that we've talked about this summer. That sentiment also shows up in the book of Judges, in the book of Nehemiah, where those other nations are to be fought against or conquered or kept out with high walls or excluded in some way from God's blessing and God's favor. But there's another thread, another stream that weaves its way through the Psalms and the Old Testament as well. It's a counterpoint to that one, and you find it here in Psalm 67, where there are no enemies, no us versus Instead, in verse 4, let the nations, all of them, be glad and sing for joy. For you, God, judge the peoples, again, all of them, with equity and guide the nations, all of them, upon earth. This is we and us in the largest possible sense of the word. And I think it is a timely message for us today here in the United States of America. Yesterday, we celebrated Independence Day, the birth of our nation. It is right and good and fitting that we should set aside a day to celebrate our country, our land, our heritage, and all that is good about it, all the ways in which God has blessed us with freedom and with prosperity, even, perhaps especially, in a time of crisis and division. But having sung all of our patriotic anthems, having enjoyed all of our backyard socially distant barbecues yesterday, today, July 5th, is a great time to remember and celebrate the fact that we are also part of an even larger family, a larger tribe than just the United States of America. We 
all of us are part of the human race. God's children, God's beautiful, diverse creations in all nation, in every land and every culture. You see, the ancient Israelites had room in their worship playbook for both kinds of prayers. And so should we. All of this blessing and favor that we find in Psalm 67, however, comes with a bit of a catch, a requirement, strings attached. At least it did for the ancient people of Israel, and I suspect the same is true for us today. So, to read the fine print at the bottom of God's blessing and favor, we have to flip back in our Bibles all the way back to the place where that blessing and favor was first granted, the place where God first promised that Israel would someday become a great nation, way back when it was just one small family consisting of an old man and an old woman with no children. Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you all of the families of the earth shall be blessed. Did you hear the catch? Father Abraham and all of his descendants and everyone to whom God has shown favor up to today, we're all blessed for one reason and one reason alone, and all of that blessing and favor is contingent upon this one thing. I will bless you, says God, so that you may be a blessing to others, so that in you all of the families of all of the earth may also be blessed. When we are simply content to sit back and count our blessings and give thanks for all the ways we are fortunate and we do nothing more than that, we are not living up to our part of the bargain. If you are blessed as an individual in your life, in your career, in your endeavors, if your family is blessed, if your community is blessed, if your nation is truly blessed, then it is because God wants you to do something with that blessing, not just be thankful for it, although that is important. God wants you to take that blessing that you have been given and use it to bless others, to help others others, to extend that favor to others until all the world and every nation has good reason to say along with you and along with the psalmist, the earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us, all of us, to the ends of the earth. Don't let the sun go down on you today without taking your opportunity this day to be a blessing in some way to someone who needs it in your world. As we observe communion today, I am mindful of the fact that we are dispersed. Here in the sanctuary, we are spread out as far as we can possibly be from one another in order to remain safe, and those who are watching at home are spread out in different houses throughout our community. And yet, when we speak of gathering around a table, today that doesn't mean gathering in a physical sense. It means gathering in a spiritual sense sense with our minds, with our heart, with our soul, with our presence. And so we do speak of one table that unites us, one bread and one cup that unite us together. And when we partake of this sacrament, we're also uniting ourselves 
with all those throughout the world who are doing the same thing today, those in the past centuries who have done this thing, and those in the years to come, our children and our children's children, who will also be united by this act together. And in that sense, we do celebrate one table, one bread, one cup, and we are one body, no matter how spread out or dispersed we can be. This is the Lord's table, and that means we welcome to it everyone whom Jesus welcomed of any belief, of any race, of any creed, of any economic and social status, of any orientation, of any color, whatever defines you as a person, you are welcome to come to this table. Who do we welcome? I'll quote my son. All of them. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread. And when he had broke the bread and blessed it, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, and when he had poured it out, he said, This is the cup of the new covenant. My blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so it is that whenever we eat this bread or drink from this cup, we are proclaiming his good news until he comes again. At this time, I invite you, those in the sanctuary, to take the cup that you were given when you came in, those watching at home, to take the bread that you have prepared and the juice that you have prepared for this occasion. If you're here in the sanctuary, if you peel off the little top layer and you take the wafer, uh, and if for some reason your wafer fell out, um, as has been known to happen, um, you can raise your hand and somebody will go get you another one. As you eat this bread, whatever kind of bread it is that you're eating, I want you to remember that this is the body of Christ, broken for you. Let us partake together. And as you drink from the cup, as you drink from the cup, whatever cup you drink from, I want you to remember that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now we will engage in a moment of quiet reflection as our musicians lead us in singing, let us break bread together on our knees. You can put the little cups when you're done in the little holder in your pews and we'll come and pick them up after the service. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together. wine together. Let us drink wine together on our knees. Let us drink wine together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my Let us praise God together. Let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God together. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Gracious God, may we who have received this sacrament live in the unity of your Holy Spirit, that we may show forth your gifts to all the world. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who taught us all to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings At this time, I'd like to share with you a few announcements about things that are going on in the life of our community and ways in which you can participate. The first one, we are missing Calvin the Camel. He's been sent out in our wandering Calvin uh, event this summer, but we're not sure quite who has him. And so if it's you, please make sure that you take some good pictures of your adventures with Calvin and send them back to us so that we can share them with others next week. We definitely want to have some pictures to share next week, so hopefully we can find where Calvin is and, uh, and find out what he's been up to. Because the coronavirus seems to um, be an ongoing thing, a long-term thing in our communities, uh, we have decided to form a medical advisory panel. Uh, we are blessed and fortunate to have several doctors and nurses and medical health professionals in our church community who are church members. And so we have reached out to some of them and invited them to be a part of an advisory panel uh, that can help us to make good decisions going forward about opening and closing and safety protocols and all the things that we want to do to make sure that our community is taken care of going forward. So we ask your prayers for those who are going to serve on this medical advisory panel and your continued prayers for our elected church officers uh, as we make these kinds of decisions. And we also ask your patience because that means things are likely to change and keep changing as we keep up with what's going on uh, in our community. The Libra Institute is having its Grassroots Leadership Academy. We have talked about this several weeks, and this is the week where it's going to happen. If you would like to learn how to become more engaged and become more active uh, as a voice in your community for change, then uh, we encourage you to join our friends at the Libra Institute and sign up for this certification process. I believe it is this coming week, but you can still register. Uh, there's a link on our church website, which is is firstpresbyterian.church. Uh, if you find the Libra Institute Grassroots Leadership Academy page, uh, there's a link for how you can sign up for that. We are still in need of people to help us lead our worship services, and I want to thank those who have uh, already done so. Dante, can we change the slide, please? All right, so uh, we're looking for people to be... Um, to do the chiming of the hour, like the Booth family did today, to do the scripture reading, like Renita did today, to do prayers or any other types of liturgies. If you are able to help us and do that, uh, we would certainly appreciate that. Just let me know. You can, uh, if you're on Facebook, you can let us know in the chat feature that you would like to volunteer to do that. Uh, if you're here in the sanctuary, let me know when we're outside at the end of the service, and we would love to, to have your, um, your help and your leadership in our worship, putting our worship together. 
I want to thank everyone who has continued to support the church financially uh, over the past several months. And I want to once again remind you there are several ways to do this. You can uh, give online through our website, firstpresbyterian.church. If you have the Venmo smartphone app, you can use that to give to us. Our handle is FPCEP, First Presbyterian Church El Paso on Venmo. And of course, if you are here in the building, uh, the offering plates are not going to be passed, but they are in the back of the sanctuary in the narthex and on your way out. If you'd like to make a donation, you can do so in that way. Next Sunday, we will have a guest preacher, and I'm pretty excited about this. We've heard from this guest preacher before. This is, we get the next slide up. This is Keith Giles. Keith Giles has preached a few times for us before. He did our Faith and Politics series. Uh, he is a best-selling author of several books, and most recently, a guest on Anderson Cooper's show. Um, and so he is going to be with us next Sunday. I have no idea what he's going to preach about, but I know it will be exciting. I will be here also to hear what he has to say, um, and I encourage you to share that information with anyone you think might be interested in hearing a, a great sermon. So we're going to welcome Keith next Sunday as our guest preacher. We want to wish a happy birthday to those who are celebrating birthdays, either this past week or the coming week, including Ben O'Conn, Barry Warmond, David Mullings, Colonel Jim Swinson, Piper Booth. Piper, are you up there? Happy birthday, Piper. <laughs> Nancy Bowers and Nadia Cochran. If you know any of these people, please make sure to drop them a line, send them a note, a message, a text, uh, and let them know how much we appreciate having them as part of our faith community. And now we are going to sing our closing song. This is a beautiful, beautiful song that uses a traditional tune but speaks of much of what Psalm 67 does and much of what I talked about in my sermon, the desire for us to both pray, praise and give thanks for the nation and the land that we have while acknowledging other people in other lands are also blessed and God has blessed all of us in so many ways. So let us sing together, this is my song, O God of all the nations. This is my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for lands afar and mine. This is my Peace abound where strife has reigned.
After the benediction, we invite those of you who are watching us online to share greetings and words of peace with one another. Um, and those of you who are in the building, we invite you to remember to put your mask back on before leaving. And once you are outside at a nice socially acceptable distance, you can wave to your friends, say hello, and share God's peace and God's love with our church family. And now as you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon each and every one of you and grant you peace. Amen. Go in peace.